Hey friends, this is totally random, but it is Saturday afternoon. My wife is working at the hospital tonight. My kids are running around the neighborhood, so I thought I would take a moment and upgrade my websites to .NET 8, because that's what you do when you're a huge nerd. So let's uh, go to split screen here and take a look at what's going on. If we go to Hanselman.com, which is my brochureware website, and we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see that Hansman.com is currently being run on .NET 6. .NET 6, which is the LTS, or the Long-Term Support Release. And if we go to .NET, the main website, and click Download, we can see that a couple of weeks ago uh, we had version 8.02 of .NET 8, which is Long-Term Support. Long-Term Support means that I won't have to think about it as much, maybe, as the other versions. Of course, you can click on all .NET versions, and you can see all the different versions that are available. I was on .NET 6, which is still in support until this November. But if I switch over to .NET 8, get new features, new performance benefits, and of course, support gets moved out a couple of years. So there's really no reason for me not to do it. So let's let's just do it, you know, live because why not, right? So do 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 do. I'm going to switch to the Hanselman directory here. I want to point out that I'm using the .NET 8 SDK. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and make myself smaller. We'll make this a little bit bigger. And then I'll go and make sure that we are up to date with a nice little git pull right there. And let's go and do a code dot to bring up Visual Studio Code, which I will also make larger. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to be using the C Sharp Dev Kit which gives me the Solution Explorer up here. So this is using .NET on VS Code, and I've got an extra extension in call, uh, installed here, which is called the C Sharp Dev Kit, and you can just sign into it the way that you sign into Visual Studio Community or something like that, and that gives me a lot of uh, new support, including the uh, integrated Solution Explorer, Test Explorer, and stuff like that. So that's cool. Let's take a look at our uh, project. I can look at that if I want to in the file view. So I can switch between the file view and the Solution Explorer view. You can see here that I'm targeting .NET 6. Now I could just kind of go YOLO and change that to uh, .NET 8 uh, and then maybe just run around and chase things. But there is a thing called the .NET Upgrade Assistant. And the .NET Upgrade Assistant is a uh, either a command line tool or a tool that you can use inside of Visual Studio. I kind of like the CLI or the command line tool, so I'm going to use that. Uh, what I'm going to do is go back to my command line here, and I'm going to say upgrade assistant.upgrade. You can see here that I installed it first with tool install, .NET tool install dash G for global upgrade assistant. And I'm going to say upgrade assistant dot. This is an interactive process, and this is kind of cool. It's going to pop up. Um, this menu and I can pick, do I want to go from 6 to 7 or 6 to 8 or even .NET 9, which would be a preview version that's going to come out later. I'm going to pick .NET 8. I appreciate that it actually calls out the support dates, which I think is cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And let's take a look. Actually, no, I'm going to hit Control C. You know what I should do first? Um, because I'm on the main branch, right? And that's janky. So um, let's go and do a, um, a .NET, um, so we do a git checkout. This is actually a cool thing. I've added the um, GitHub Copilot command line stuff. I've actually wrote about this on my blog a while back. Git uh, AI Hanselman, uh, I think we called it GitHub Copilot for CLI Power for, for PowerShell. So I downloaded Copilot for the CLI, and then I made these. Um, these little functions, these little aliases. So when I type git with a question mark, and I go git, mm -hmm, it's actually going to call the GitHub Copilot CLI. So if I forget, for example, how to make a new branch, make a new branch called .NET 8 and switch to it. It's going to ask Copilot. It's going to go and run that command. So then it just ran git switch dash c for create.NET 8. And now you can see here we're on the.NET 8 um, 
branch, which is hot. And I just did it by not typing git, but by typing git, uh, which is kind of cool. I like to put the little mm there, which is nice. Now, now let's run the upgrade assistant. Always nice to do things on another branch, isn't it? Dot net eight, say yes. I'm gonna go and take a look at my project. Do, 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 do. It's gonna go and take a look at some stuff. Now we'll say git uh, status. You can see that it modified that CS proj right there. And then I could say git diff. You see that in this case, all it actually ended up doing was updating that to .NET 8. So this project is pretty much just a Razor Pages project. So doing that did not require a lot of changes. I'm going to actually now type .NET build. Now, I use Visual Studio. I tend to go Control-Shift-B, Control-Shift-B. It's, it's a cord. It's a hotkey that's in my hands. So I actually made a Control-Shift-B um, hotkey in PowerShell. Uh, again, nerd. So if I go and look for uh, .NET build, you can see here that it's actually a PS read line key handler. So when I type control shift B, which is again, built into my hands, it actually inserts uh, .NET build directly into the command line, which is one of those stupid little fun uh, life helpers, little, little, little sprinkle. So I just hit control shift B, it types .NET build. That lets me confirm it. I'm gonna go ahead and just .NET clean, just cause I'm paranoid, .NET build, that builds. Then I'm going to go into, I'm going to uh, go into the bin folder. I'm going to push the current directory onto the stack so I can come back here. And I can see that there's a bin debug .NET 8 that just got built, which is hot. Then I'm going to go and type pop D, which brings me back to that folder. And then I could go and .NET run. I could also hit control F5 if I wanted to. Uh, we'll go ahead and run this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What, where, what directory is this coming on? Oh, there you go. Cool, there it is. Looks like it works. Now I will go and do a little commit, updating to .NET. Oops, let me make that bigger for you. Git commit dash n. Updating to .NET 8. Um, I'm not going to push it. I'm going to then do a git checkout main and then do a git merge .NET 8. So that is over here. Now I can see right here that I've got something to push. Now, when I push it though, who's going to build it and is it going to break? It's absolutely going to break. So I got to check two things. Now, what I can do is I'm going to check um, where I'm building it. Now, in, in my case, I build still in um, Azure DevOps. You could build in Azure, Dev, Azure DevOps or you could build in um, GitHub Actions. So over here in Azure DevOps, you can see that the last time I built this website was a couple, three weeks ago. Um, I've got actually my website and my blog and my podcast all up there at the same time. I, I keep these because I like to, you know, show people these different uh, reality, you know, real, real things. These are these are representative of reality. The this one uses YAML, okay. Uh, so in the in the example of when I updated this one, I can actually go in there and look at that pipeline, and this pipeline is a YAML pipeline, and it looks like this, okay. So here I had to say use .NET 8 in YAML. And then I also needed to go into um, Azure when I updated my podcast, go into configuration. And then for the app service that I'm running in, I needed to change my versions. So I need to do the same thing for my main website. However, um, over here in DevOps on this machine, on this website rather, pardon me, this pipeline is an old style pipeline. This is the old visual pipeline. Now, again, everyone's different. The point is I'm building on my local machine on .NET 8. I need to make sure I'm building in the cloud on .NET 8 as well. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna change it to uh, .NET Core 8. 
cool. I'm sure, I could look at the YAML underneath that if I felt like it as well. Confirm our version, do a restore, do a build, and then it's going to go and publish it, publish that artifact. Cool. Let's go and save. Updating to .NET 8. It's using Ubuntu. Save and run. Okay, so that's going to start running that job. Now, however, on the other side, what's waiting for it is Azure, which is currently not, not ready because I didn't update it. Now, if I wanted to be super fancy, if this was a production website, I'd have staging.hanselman.com. And then over there, I would uh, have one on six and one on eight. I'd have them fronted by something like Azure Front Door, and I'd go and do some A-B testing before. But, uh, you know, when I uh, do things, I do things in production. Okay, I'm going to change this from .NET 6 to .NET 8. Hit save. That's going to update my web app. So I'm telling it to run this in .NET 8. Now, of course, if I was using a container, I'll show you that actually in just a little bit, I would update the container to run a little bit differently. So currently on the .NET uh, 8 website here, on the, excuse me, on, the, on the Hanselman website, if we scroll down at the very, very bottom, it's powered by .NET 6. I'm going to hit refresh. You can see it has not yet updated yet. Okay, it's on .NET 6 still. Now the application is updating. A little bit, I hit it and I was going refresh, 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 refresh. So it looks like I made it mad. Looks like this job has finished. The release is happening right now in progress. Okay, remember I said I should uh, publish to staging instead of publishing to uh, production. There you go, it's done. Let's go back, we'll hit refresh. This is where we start to panic. Okay, stage one succeeded. Okay, everything's cool. Let's go back over here, dot net eight, dot net eight. I think I saved it. Oh, that's interesting. That's, uh, oh, there we go. Just updated .NET Core 8. That's cool. Wanted to make sure. Uh, it looks like it said 6 there for a second. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oops. Wrong window. Too many windows. Okay. Cool. This is great. So now we are not working. Let's go find out why. This is interesting because when I did it in, uh, on my podcast site, it worked just like that. So I've obviously forgotten something. Confirming that it does, in fact, run locally. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's a little mad about TLS handshake. Site does load locally. Mm -mm. Deployed right. Making sure I didn't forget anything in the pipeline. Eight eight x eight x eight x. Cool. Let's look at the pipeline log. Oh, hang on a second. I'm a dork. I'm, I didn't push the darn thing. All right, friends. I'm like, why is it not working? I never, I never pushed it. Darn it. What am I doing? There we go. Let me see. Okay, let's go back here. There's the push. Let's click on it. There we go. How did I know? So it's using that last one. It's so funny. That's what happens when you try to rush and do stuff in one take. There we go. Now notice here, that's installing .NET Core inside of uh, the uh, the Azure DevOps job. Of course, again, this could be done in uh, 
in GitHub Actions or, you know, whatever makes you happy. Do the build. Now, in this case, the publish is a publish artifact. Publish artifact, in this case, I'm going to publish a zip file. There you go. Publish. And then the release is going to start. So over here where it says release, that was a failed release. There you go. Here's the new one. It's queued up. It's sitting on Azure Pipelines. There we go. It's taking that zip file and it's publishing it to, uh, to Azure. And of course, I could go back over here and look at the deployment center. You can see those deployments because I've integrated that inside of Azure. See, you can your app is configured with Azure Pipelines, right? The logs. See those logs? There you go. Deployed successfully. Still going. Come on. See the logs. Succeeded. Why did I deploy to production, dude? That was probably a bad idea. There it is. So as it's there, scroll to the bottom. There you go. It worked. All right. Site is deployed. It's on .NET Core 8. Saw it there. Confirmed here. And confirmed on the page itself. Right there. Cool. So other than that little hiccup where I failed to push it to the uh, the uh, CI/CD, pretty straightforward. Hope this helps you upgrade your site to .NET 8.